Can scoliosis cause chest pain? Understanding the different symptoms that can be associated with scoliosis, first thing you have to understand is the basic structure of the spine. The spine is composed of vertebrae or bones that are stacked upon each other, and each one is stacked upon each other, on top, um, one on top of another, and there's 24 spinal vertebrae. And these vertebrae are separated by something called intervertebral discs, and these discs are designed to act like shock absorbers and also designed to create like spacers so the spinal nerves and spinal cord could have more, more room to function properly. And the spine has natural curves to make the spine stronger, and these curves are from the side, and it's completely straight from the, from the front. And the natural curves from the side act, the, act as a uh, kind of a compressive spring, so as gravity and compression works down on the spine, these curves spring back up like a coiled spring. Now, what is scoliosis? So scoliosis, unfortunately, takes this no, these, the normal structure of the spine and alters it. It is a structural pro progressive condition normally diagnosed sometime in adolescent cases, but unfortunately can be diagnosed in the adult stage too. It's a, a natural sideways curvature of the spine, meaning the curves that are supposed to exist from the side now are starting to appear in the front side, and normally there is a rotation or a twist associated with the scoliosis. And the twist is always into the side of concavity, meaning the spine is rotating into the concavity side, and the spinal rotation and curvature we know that the Cobb angle, which is the measurement known to, me to look for scoliosis, needs to be at 10 degrees or greater for there to be a diagnosis of scoliosis. Now, a Cobb angle is known as the orthopedic gold standard in assessing scoliosis, and it's taken during an x-ray. We take a scoliosis x-ray, and it's a measurement that's taken off the x-ray. Lines are, draw are drawn from the very top of the most tilted vertebra to the very lowest or lower most tilted vertebra, and those lines are now compared in angle, and that angle will give you um, give you will give you the give you the size of the scoliosis. So we get the intersecting lines from this angle, and it's expressed in degrees: 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. And the Cobb angle determines the severity or the size of the scoliosis that the person actually has. Now there are different severity levels when there's associated to scoliosis. And even though we know scoliosis is a highly variable condition that really necessitates a very customized treatment approach, when it comes to c traditional treatment options, majority of the time, it's the size of the angle that, de that determines exactly what type of care they're gonna get. Curves that are considered mild scoliosis cases, meaning between 10 and 25 degrees. Now understand these categories of scoliosis severity are based upon the, the treatment option of surgery. So when they say mild, moderate, severe, and so forth, they're determining is the curve big enough to, to warrant surgery. It's not determining the impact in the body. Meaning if somebody's di diagnosed with a mild scoliosis, they could have pain, they could have posture problems, they can see apparent issues, they could have range of motion issues. But they're, they're, what they're saying is that this curve isn't big enough to warrant surgery. So that's where the word mild comes from. It doesn't really determine or dictate the effect that the scoliosis is actually having on the body. Anyway, mild curves are diagnosed between 10 and 25 degrees. At this stage, they normally don't recommend anything, no matter what size or how old the patient is, no matter what they're experiencing. If they're having any kind of pain or discomfort, it's normally pain treatment, nothing for the curve itself. Moderate scoliosis is diagnosed between 25 and 40 degrees. And in moderate cases, in the vast majority of cases that are diagnosed, again, there is nothing recommended. The only exception that any time treatment is recommended is if the patient is an adolescent case and they're in their early stage of growth and, they're, and during this stage, they would recommend a Boston brace or a Providence brace to try to slow down the progression so they don't move into the next category of severe. Now, unfortunately, these braces are not designed to reduce the curve, not make the curve straighter. They're just trying to slow it down and they're hoping that the curve doesn't become four degrees or greater once you become 40 degrees or greater, now they call it severe. And the only treatment option that's recommended for severe cases to try to reduce the curve is spinal fusion or, or scoliosis surgery, which is very invasive and can lead to lots of complications throughout somebody's life. So many patients are hesitant to, to jump into spinal fusion. And really it's a very weird diagnosis system or, or treatment method because it's like we do nothing until it becomes severe enough for surgery there's never treatment that's recommended to try to reduce curves while they're small so you never have to face surgery, and more importantly, make curves smaller so they have less impact on the body. I like to talk about a last category, I call that very severe scoliosis, and these were, these were angles 
in my opinion, are 80 plus degrees. When we start getting 80 plus degrees, we think the effects can be greater to the body, but we really don't know. There's no hard line that once you hit this number, you're gonna have this effect. It's different based upon every single person. So this is what we're talking about when the symptoms of scoliosis, that it really varies. It varies on patient's age, on condition type, on curve location, and condition severity. And in fact, you can have two patients that, ha that are relatively the same age, have relatively the same size curve, have relatively the same shape curve, and have two different types of symptom patterns associated with their condition. It's, it's extremely variable. There's no, no rules associated with it, but the general rule is that the more severe the scoliosis is, the more noticeable the symptoms will be, definitely posturally and possibly functionally, but we really don't know. In children and adolescents, the number one symptom tends to be postural. You see that, you can see shoulders, you can see hips, you can see chest, you can see waist, you can see all this unleveling or this un asymmetry that's associated in, in their posture. In adults, it's not posture that's the main problem, it tends to be pain. pain. Pain tends to bring out the diagnosis of scoliosis. So the question is, can scoliosis cause chest pain? Well, scoliosis induces uneven forces to the body, and it can cause chest pain in two specific ways. First of all, thoracic scoliosis cases and even lumbar curves that have a, a higher curve or a compensating thoracic curve, that anytime there's a thoracic involvement, this can cause asymmetrical development to the ribs. And this causes a rotational component that occurs that can deform the rib arches, meaning rib arches should be symmetrical from one side to the other. Anytime you have a twist inside the scoliosis case, which all scoliosis cases do, the rib arches now become asymmetrical. These, these ribs will pull, on the, will pull on the muscles and tissues around the rib and affect the way they attach to the sternum. This can cause chest pain. 100% it can lead to chest pain, rib pain, lots of things, and this can increase as, the, as their curve increases. It can also cause, uh, as the rotation and curve increases, it can cause stiffness to the spine. And stiffness in this area can also lead to chest pain because it's, the spine isn't moving and flexing the way it's supposed to. And the last thing is as the rib arches change, it also can affect the space for lungs for them to function properly. And this can lead to a cardiovascular or a pulmonary functional loss or impairment as a result of the scoliosis. Now this is where patients uh, get Fear. And a lot of times scoliosis surgeons will say that if you don't have surgery immediately, you're going to have this cardiovascular or pulmonary impairment as a result of your scoliosis. And the problem is we don't actually know when that actually happens. We don't know if it happens at 30 degrees or 40 degrees or 50 degrees or 60 degrees or 70 degrees. And in fact, it's probably different for every single person. And we don't, there are some cases that come in my office and they have they have 80, 90 degree curves and they have no functional impairment. They've actually have functional lung capacity tests and they don't have any. And then we have patients come in our office with 30 or 40 degree curves and they already have it. So the issue is we don't really know when it's gonna happen, but it can definitely lead to chest pain because you're affecting the way the lungs and maybe the cardiovascular system and the pulmonary function, the pulmonary system is functioning properly. It can lead to chest pain. So scoliosis can lead to chest pain in many different ways but the best remedy for dealing with this is to be proactive. Meaning one thing we do know that the smaller the curve you have, the less likely scoliosis is gonna cause any of these things that I mentioned. So proactive treatment or treating curves when they're smaller makes the most sense. But unfortunately, when I went through the, the treatment of scoliosis for you traditionally, normally most treatment is weight, is, is pushed aside and cast aside until scoliosis cases become severe enough for surgery. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we like to treat scoliosis proactively because we like to reduce curves so we can prevent things like chest pain and other symptoms that could be associated with scoliosis because if you reduce a small curve, you're never gonna have a severe one. If you have a severe curve already and you're already experiencing things like this, the best way to try to reduce the symptom of what you're ever experiencing like chest pain is to make the curve smaller because the smaller your curve is, the better, better your body can function and the better your body can deal with the scoliosis that it already has and it's developed Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.